Hi friends, Pastor Melody Hagen here from Trinity Lutheran. And Vicar Deb Monin here from First English Lutheran. This is our third week of reading sacred scripture together, uh, Lectio Divina, um, where we take a piece of scripture and we read it over a period of time, a couple weeks, um, paying attention to what word images come to mind and how does this sacred text uh, that spoke to the generations before us speak to us today. So that's what we're discussing today in our third time reading it through. One of the techniques that we really recommend uh, you trying when you're reading with your prayer partner is to try out different translations um, because that can give you some new insight that you hadn't thought about. Different translations translate differently. The one that we most commonly use is called the New uh, Revised Standard Version, uh, the NRSV, and that is a word-for-word -word translation um, from the Greek to the English. The NIV is probably one of the more popular translations now. Um, that is a paraphrase by paraphrase translation and tries to make it a little bit more uh, user friendly uh, with the English that we use today. That can be helpful. Um, one of my favorites um, that's written by Eugene Peterson, a professor, um, is the Message Bible. And that is a whole paragraph translation translation. So it's really different than a lot of the other translations, but he uses a lot of imagery words that help us think about this um, scripture a little differently. So that's what we're going to read for you today, the same scripture reading from Luke 17, but I'm going to read the message translation for you. It happened that as he made his way toward Jerusalem, Jesus crossed over the border between Samaria and Galilee. Jesus entered a village, ten men, all lepers met him. They kept their distance but raised their voices, calling out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Taking a good look at them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. They went, and while still on their way, became clean. One of them, when he realized he was healed, turned around, came back, shouting his gratitude and glorifying God. He kneeled at Jesus' feet, so grateful. He couldn't thank him enough, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus said, were not ten healed? Where are the nine? Can none be found to come back and give glory to God except this outsider? He said to him, Get up on your way. Your faith has healed and saved you. So Deb, as we think about this a third time chewing on this story um, and hearing a different version, um, I'm wondering what's standing out to you today as good news for our life today. Yeah, there's so many things in that story. Um, I think the first thing that came to me as I thought about it today was he didn't realize he was made well until he went on his journey until later. And that's really interesting. God works, God's healing us, but we don't realize it often until days or weeks or sometimes even years later. So that's what stuck out, stuck out to me today. Um, for me, that was true, that phrase, on the way. Mm -hmm. um, there's a sense in which there's movement, um, that Jesus is moving with the people and healing um, but sometimes the movement is to pause and turn back um, and to give gratitude. And Jesus doesn't say, just stay here. Then he says, okay, now keep going, mm -hmm. keep moving. Um, and so I was just very grateful for um, moments in my life where God has brought healing. And, um, and then 
not stay there, but mm -hmm. keep keep moving because um, there's more healing. We're, we're never fully healed. Um, we're never fully um, not in need of God. Um, and so there are lots of times in our lives we need to turn to God and ask for healing. So um, I guess that would be my prayer for you all listening in and praying with your prayer partners this week is um, to ask one another, how can we be praying for healing, um, continuing healing in our lives? So thanks for checking in and listening, and thank you, Deb, for praying and listening with me today. Mm -hmm. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.